Uh, hello and welcome to the All In Podcast. I'm going to be doing a very quick episode just looking at uh, the last team fight in Team Liquid vs. T1. Uh, spoilers if uh, you haven't seen the fight yet uh, or the game or don't know the results, you might not want to be watching this. But uh, for the rest of us, let's get right into it. So we're going to be looking at this um, last team fight that T1 uh, played against Team Liquid here. And uh, we'll see on the map. Um, me pausing it here and there, that uh, Pioshik is wrapping around. Um, there's not a lot of vision for T1 down here, so I like this idea to wrap around, go for a flank, try and kick somebody in. Um, and we can see that the positioning of TL is very aggressive. They're very much in um, T1's face, and they're contesting, contesting the mid-wave. Uh, this is very common. Uh, I think the idea here is that they don't want to basically TEL doesn't want to get pushed further into their area uh, and, and spend time clearing that wave because during that time T1 will go into the river clear out wards set up their own vision and then Jace and uh, Ash Zeus and Gumayushi they can sit in fog of war and poke you and not have a lot of punishment right because they went in and cleared vision uh, so I think TL here is trying to contest the mid wave. They want to fight immediately before uh, they can get hit by random Jace poke and random Ash arrows. Uh, start the fight on their own turns. So um, we're coming in here, and Gumiyushi hits an Ash arrow onto the back line as Kasante is walking in. And I think this right here is the point, the last point before the point of no return. Sorry, a bit hard to say there, but um, essentially, Core J makes a decision to go in after this, but I think that when this Ash is going through, APA probably doesn't speak Korean, maybe wasn't communicating it to him, but they should not have fought, I think, at this instance, as soon as APA gets hit by this Ash Arrow. So APA does get hit by the Ash Arrow, and Summit is going in. Um, okay, I think he's Kasante. He has no Flash, but... I think we can still get out here, but as soon as Core JJ does decide to go in, he flashes in, he gets a three-man rail stun into the Aphelios combo, uh, and then Core JJ does get a, uh, another stun on the back end here. But as you can see, Summit is almost already dead, and T1 is still mostly full health, right? This is the Renata tankiness uh, coming into play, um, and Pioshik, notably, has still not joined the fight. He is Right in the river pit, you can see on the minimap, he still hasn't um, gone in and kicked anybody or disrupted anybody. So there is essentially, it's a 2v5 or a 3v5, but 3 out of 2 of them is only ulted, right? APA has not participated because he was Ash Arrowed, and he's now going to get slowed by Zeus with a Shock Blast and his um, uh, Last Whisper item, the slow, Cyrildas. Uh, so this fight is currently a 3v5. Uh, Yeon does get start to get hit, but as you can see, APA is already half health, and Pioshik has just joined the fight. Pioshik does get involved, but then as you can see, Yeon unfortunately gets caught at the edge of the Oriana ball, and gets sucked into the Renata ulti, and then, uh, well, <laughs> he can't play the game after that, so, uh, let's go back a little bit. Um, right here is the big ulti combo right but i think they needed to time it with lee sin here to do something at the same time disrupt gumiushi disrupt zeus or get completely involved in the clusterfuck um but yeah i think another thing to point out here is we're gonna watch yeon specifically now he's going to get clipped on the edge by an oriana bolt right here um and yes i think a lot of people are saying that uh Yeon should have flashed, and I agree, Yeon should have flashed, but as you can see, APA is still not participated in this fight. He is too far away. Uh, Pioshik has not participated in this fight. He's too far away, and Yeon is trying his best to participate, and yes, he has slow hands. He should have flashed the Oriana ulti, but for being honest, if he flashes the Oriana ulti, he only can go down into the river brush or out back towards the mid lane. He's not going to be able to participate in this fight afterwards. So... What am I trying to say? Uh, what I'm trying to say is essentially that, yes, I really think APA and Yeon played this fight pretty poorly. They still had their summoners when they died. Yeon didn't use his summoners really at all. Got caught by um, 
you know, some pretty obvious uh, abilities that he needs to dodge. Uh, same with APA. Uh, but at the same time, I want to, like, do a little thought experiment and think about if APA and Yeon had played in a way where they could dive these, dodge these abilities, uh, they would still not be able to participate in this fight. They would not be able to walk up. They wouldn't be able to really use anything but um, Aphelios ulti or Syndra EQ, right? There's no way Syndra is going to be able to walk up and Q and W and ulti. There's no way Yeon's going to be able to walk up and auto attack. And I think that that doesn't change even if Pioshik is closer to the fight and gets a big uh, Lee Sin kick. I don't think that changes if Korja J manages to actually clip Zeus on the top side with his ulti combo. Maybe, like, there's a couple of different angles you could really look at this, that if it goes perfectly for TL, I still don't think it's, like, a considerable wipe. At most, it's even, right? Because, if we're being honest, Syndra and Aphelios are not able to walk up against Oriana, against Jace, and against Renata Ash. It's four other five comps that really have a ton of zone control against these mid-range uh, backline carries on TL. So I think that unfortunately, while I understand a lot of what was going on uh, to make this call for TL, I think it was unfortunately a bit half-baked. They didn't understand their comp fully, and they engaged in a fight that was going to be doomed no matter how you look at it, no matter how well it went, no matter how mechanically good you played it. If T1 plays it mechanically well enough, it's it's a win. It's a 5v5 win. And the real options are, well, there's there's nothing to take on the map, right? They can probably let this wave come in, lose vision in their jungle uh, after this fight. Like, assuming this fight doesn't happen, I mean. Um, and they can eat some poke. They can eat some poke. They can sustain. They can lose some camps, right? Maybe lose their uh, top and bot tower. And that's unfortunate. But it's not losing the game, right? TL has gotten to this point and has enough gold that regardless if T1 gets more, slightly more ahead, uh, like 100, 1,000 gold here and there, it doesn't really change anything, right? It's all going to be about the execution of a single team fight or a single pick or a single engage. And I think TL, they got desperate. They really should have just focused on and realized that, hey, no matter what happens in this game, if we can get a pick, we can still one-shot that person with a late-game Syndra and a late-game Aphelios, and we can still have an advantage. We don't need to 5v5 team fight. We can minimize losses when T1 is grouped, but eventually people are going to have to go to Dragon or Baron. That happened in a minute. And you try to make a pick um, instead of going for a full frontal 5v5. Because unfortunately, I just I don't see how it's actually possible in this position for T1 to lose a 5v5. They're grouped together, and it's just too uh, easy for them to execute. As well as, you know, they have very good hands. <laughs> uh, so, yes, it sucks that APA and Yeon looked kind of rough in this last fight, didn't press their buttons. But I do think that it was just a call. It's a team call that is innately flawed. So, just a fun one to think about, because this was a very close game for TL. Very fun game to watch uh, NA, you know, actually try and take it against T1. They're complete underdogs, and... It's these little things, right, that add up a lot to why T1 is a good team that can play really sloppily and poorly in the early game and still come out on top. And it's because of these choices in comp and their ability to execute in 5v5 situations. Gold is really not that important when you compare it to just having good skills, having good strategy and good coordination in a team fight. Um, so... Uh, yep, yeah, that's that's going to do it for this video. Thanks for watching. I, it was just a quick one, and I wanted to have a little fun with it. All right. uh, try not to be too toxic. We'll see you on the next episode, and peace.